What's up guys, Matt from Filmora here. Have you ever wondered how big Hollywood movies film in surreal environments? Or how the weatherman does the weather report? Well that's a green screen. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a few different ways to do green screen, from the cheapest to the most expensive option. We will also cover how to film green screen backgrounds, using green screen to replace computer screens, and how to edit your green screen footage in Filmora. When all is said and done, you will learn the basics of setting up, shooting, and editing a green screen. But before we get started, let me share with you three fundamental concepts that I always like to keep in mind before shooting green screen. When filming green screen, lighting is the most important aspect. To get the clearest result, you have to light the green screen nice and evenly. If you don't light it evenly, then it will create different shades of green. If you have different shades of green, then you won't be able to fully key it out, meaning you won't fully remove the green screen. If the light on the green screen isn't even, then it's going to result in different shades of green. And those shades won't be removed because you can only remove one shade of green. Make sure there's some sort of separation between your subject and your green screen. When it comes to placing the subject in front of the green screen, they shouldn't be too close to it. You don't want them to be casting a shadow on the green screen, or that they're so close that the reflection of the green screen spills onto the subject. Spill is caused when the light from the green screen is bounced onto the subject. This is something you want to be cautious of, because if there's spill on your subject, then you're going to end up keying out the spill on your subject. This concept, even though it sounds obvious, is often forgotten. But when filming green screen, your subject shouldn't be green or they shouldn't be wearing anything green. If your subject is wearing green, or if there's any props or foreground or background elements that are green, then they will get keyed out when you key out the green screen. No matter what method, software, or camera, when doing green screen, I always go over these three methods before hitting record. There have been times where I didn't do one or two of these methods and it didn't go very well. And if it's not shot properly, it ain't gonna key well. If you've never done green screen before, then I suggest that you get the cheapest option out there, which is poster board. I got this from the dollar store for less than a dollar. The only downside to poster board is it can get messed up pretty easily. You want to keep it in pristine condition because if you get any folds or tears or if any of the color comes off, then it will make the surface all uneven and you don't want that. If the surface is uneven, then it's going to create different shades on your poster. When it comes to lighting poster board or just green screen in general, the easiest thing you can do is head outside. I love being outside. So the best type of day to film a green screen is on an overcast day. Now on a day like this, we have some breaks of sunshine, so it might not quite work. So your second best option is to find an area of shade to film your green screen. So the reason you want an overcast day or to be in the shade is to have a nice even light on your green screen. So you can see right now we're in the shade we got this nice even green. There's no harsh shadows or anything like that. The light doesn't change. It's just this even green color look to it. And that's what we want. All right, so now that we've got this taped up, let's go over our three rules that we covered earlier on green screens. So how is our lighting? By the look of it, it's pretty even. I don't see any harsh shadows or anything on the green screen. So this should be good. So our second concept, Separation and avoiding spill. Let's talk about that a little bit. Now, separation and avoiding spill. Based on where we have our subject, it looks like there's no spill. So this light here is nice and soft and even. That's what we want. We're not getting a whole lot of spill coming back. So our final concept is avoiding green. And as you can tell right now, I am not wearing green, so we are good to shoot. So it's a-okay to shoot. But, this is the tricky part of being outside, is that there is likely to be green somewhere, like in the grass, trees, or somewhere in nature. 
So make sure to find a good spot. All right, so everything checks off. So let's shoot our green screen. And today we're doing a green screen. What? Was it me? All right, that went well. Now with poster board, it can be kind of small and annoying to work with when you gotta transport it. So if you want a larger green screen and more portability, then I suggest you get a green piece of fabric. So you can buy this from a film equipment store, but you can also get it from a fabric store and it could be a tablecloth or even a blanket. But enough of this, let me show you what we use here at Filmora. Here at Filmora, we use this doohickey. But it's pretty big and the most expensive option. Now for lighting, we don't always have the luxury of going outside because it could be raining, it could be the evening, or it could just be cold. But mainly because we want more control of the light. So we choose to shoot green screen in our studio. So what type of lights do we use when shooting a green screen? We use LEDs. So we've got two LEDs set up here. And the reason for that is if we only had one, we'd end up with a gradient where one side would be bright and one side would be dark. So it would be really difficult to pull your green screen and remove it. You'd only be able to remove part of it and the other half would still be green. So you need two. That way you can get a nice balance across your green screen. We also like to use this diffusion here. Now, if you don't know where this comes from, generally you can find these in the reflectors. So if you actually unzip your reflector, you can pull this out. So, and a nice thing, a reason why we use this is to make the light nice and soft and even as well. If we were to remove this, as you can see here, you can see shadows. But if I put the diffusion in front, shadows are gone, right? So we want that nice even light on our green screen and it'll make it easier for us to pull the green screen to remove it so we can see the background. So now that we've lit our green screen and it's nice and even, we can focus on the subject. So it's very common to light the green screen separately from the subject. So before we light our subject, let's find a place to put them so that there's no spill coming from the green screen. So this greenish light bouncing onto my face, that's spill. As you can tell when I get further away from it, it disappears. And if I get closer, it comes back. So let's find a place for George further away from the green screen. So when it comes to filming George, we're gonna use two lights, a key light, and a hair light. So now that our lighting setup is all ready to go, we're gonna bring George in and see if he's ready to go. Hey Matt. What is that? It's my favorite green scarf. Doesn't it look great? <sighs> yeah, you're gonna have to lose it. All right, now we're good. Okay, now since we've got our footage, let me show you how to edit it in Filmora. Make sure you have some footage to key into the green screen. Anything will really do, but we're just gonna pick some landscape footage. If you don't have Filmora, then you can try yours free by clicking on the link here or the description box below. I'm gonna give you five seconds to do that. Well, I, um, I don't know. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> After you have started up Filmora, select full feature mode and then proceed to import the background videos and green screen footage to the media library. Drag and drop the green screen video clip to the editor's picture in picture track and put the image you want behind the green screen clip in the track below it. Right click the clip in the timeline and select the green screen option. The picture in picture window will pop up and this is where you can preview your clip and key out certain colors. Before picking what color to key out, find a good frame to work from. On the right of this picture in picture window is a preview window. This is where we can see the edits we're making. Let's use the scrubber at the bottom to find a frame. All right, I like this frame. Now. Check the Make Parts of the Clip Transparent box. With the mouse, let's use the Picker tool 
and select the color I want to key out. So in our case, green. Now drag the slider to adjust the intensity level. As you can tell, this slider will affect the transparency of your clip. Let's play back our changes to see how it looks. Make sure you keep an eye on your subject in front of your green screen. You may notice that some of your subject is keyed out. If they are, you will have to lower the intensity. Once you like how it looks, click OK, export it, and your green screening is done. Alright, that's my tutorial on how to film and edit green screen backgrounds. But we're not done yet. Have you ever wanted to put a video on a desktop computer screen or a TV, but the video wasn't ready? Well, a clever way of doing that is using one of them as a green screen and then replacing the green screen with the video later. Now, this procedure is a little different from the three concepts that we've been talking about in this video. They're still relevant, but the subject of the shot is the green screen itself. So the first thing you want to do is go onto the computer screen that you're going to use and replace the wallpaper to a solid green image. You can find this green image through Google Images or you can just make one yourself. Once your wallpaper is set, it's time to shoot the screen. If you want a person to sit in in front of the monitor, then it should be fine. Just keep in mind our concept of separation and spill. Lastly, let's make sure that the only green is on the screen and then you should be good to go. Now let me show you how to edit this in Filmora. For this green screen part, we'll be doing the same procedure as we did earlier in this video. But what's different is how we put videos in the picture-in-picture -picture tracks. That's right, tracks. We'll need two of them. After your footage is imported, first thing you will do is place any video or just a video on the main track. I suggest using a sample color because you can change the length of it to any size. Now, let's take the video you want to put on the desktop screen on the first picture-in-picture -picture track. For now, just leave it here. We'll get back to this soon. I will now take the video of my screen with the green screen wallpaper and put it on the second picture-in-picture -picture track and use the green screen tool to key out the green. Once the green screen is gone, go back to the video clip in the first picture-in-picture -picture track and select it. In the preview window, you can see that it's highlighted. You can now resize it to the size you want. So I'll resize it to the size of the monitor. Well, that's all you have to do in order to replace the screen of a computer. Once you're done with it, and it all looks good, export it. Well, that's how to shoot and edit a green screen in Filmora. I just want you to know that green screens aren't limited to backgrounds or the color green. Green is the standard color because it doesn't match any natural skin tone or hair color. You can technically use any color, but make sure your subject isn't wearing it. Or that that color that you're keying out isn't in the foreground, the background, or any ground in the image. Hope this video helped you out, and keep making videos. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and tell us what you want to green screen. We'll see you next time.